Hey, welcome to Augusta Elite Podcast. Welcome to Thanksgiving edition of Augusta All Elite. Well, because I forgot to take a break, so I'm doing this this week. Then next week, I'm basically going to take a long break. I'll be, I'll be like, I'm not going to take a long break. Like, I'll be back next week. But I will take a long break starting, like, December 1st. And after that, like, like, uh, how should I put this? Uh, you know what? I'm going to say this. Like, like, December 1st, like, between December, like, uh, do this. Like, December 4th, I will be taking my break. So, basically, see, the last podcast for the year will be on S- December 3rd on a Sunday. So that will be the final podcast for this year till 2024. I just want to get this out of the way. That's where I, that's where I end here and start my break on December 4th on Monday. And I promise I will be back on in January 2024. So for now, let's let's continue with the podcast. Starting with Raw. Sorry for the interruption. I'm just trying to get on the way. All right, welcome to this week's Raw, War Games, whatever. Let's go to the home, go home edition of Survivor Series War Games. With War Games again being the theme of this year's pay-per-view, Manager Book One, member of Nation Team and Battle, right fan and entry advantage for Saturday night. Monday we saw Chad Gable take on K Nakamura, the Powers, Rico or Jay Space Nia Jax, Lynch against Nia Zia Lee. Late Slee driving that Drew McIntyre addresses the actions from last week and starts with Judgment Day. Let's go on what happened on Monday night. We go to the open segment. We got a quick video package. Raw open with Drew McIntyre in the ring. Coach booing. Crowd booing. Saw everyone was going to listen to him. The Scott said anyone turned their back on him. He was never a fan in the first place. He didn't give a damn about these fans. He really killed Jay so for never apologizing to the people he screwed over while he was in the bloodline. McIntyre spoke about everything he has sacrificed for his, fa- for his family, how Jay's family took the biggest moment away from him when he was able to perform in front of his family in Europe. He, has, he said he hasn't joined, joined Jumping Day, but we have ripped the game the chance to get Jay Cage to take it. This brought Jay to res- out to respond to Jumping Day show up and McIntyre by- provide backup. Jay eventually by his board games team too. Adam Pierce said he didn't want anyone from your team fighting anyone who would cost their team advantage on Saturday night. He also saw Babyface team pick a fifth member before the end of the night. McIntyre did a great job as part by the segment. Better than came felt, felt so much force to get two teams have to stand up. That would have been more useful at the end of the show. The stars start. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Pierce allowed the team to pick what member would fit on the show who wore advantage. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. It's something we do. Like, I. We got Nia Jack versus Rachel Rodriguez. We got Mania Powers this week when Jax Rodriguez fair off in singles match. Jax size gave revenge, so she was going to take the show early. She trash talked quite a bit until Rodriguez made a comeback, sent her out of the ring, shoulder tackle. We now see Jax back in the driver's seat at the beginning, focus her offense on the back of her opponent. When Rodriguez tries, she was able to flip Jax up her shoulder due to damage she had taken. When she was unable to get a power bomb, Jax used the opportunity to hit her finisher for the win. This is better than expected. A decent inner resemble force versus the mild ball object kind of showdown. Rodriguez always looks over best when, when she's faced someone closer to her side or bigger. She was the biggest highlight here. And I Jax defeated Richard Rodriguez. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we got a quick backstage moment. Backstage set when Priest told Ripley he wanted to find an advantage match. She said she needed to wait for McIntyre to discuss it as a group. Ultra Ifemi seemed unhappy about this. Rodriguez had a nice club, but yeah, whatever. Let's, let's go to Becky Lynch versus Zai uh, Lee. Okay, before she entered the cage at War Game, Lynch had some personal business handling with Lee on Monday. NXT Women's Champion Leah Reck was in the crowd to watch Lee since they're involved in a feud right now. Dramatically, Lee take the trail, but a strategic takedown for Lynch turned the tail, put the man in charge right up. Well, regain the upper hand, hands on the brain. I mean, not on the brain. All right, all right anything. Lynch begins to show some signs of life. They trace her big moves near falls before the man finally kept lead down for the three count with a manhandle slam. It was a high competitive match, a genetic one that make Lee look a lot better. She has on the main roster at this point. She needed a performance like this, even if she's standing up losing. Uh, when Dan's control showed her a cross star fight. Lynch's team showed up that turned into a big brawl. So Becky Lynch defeated Zion Lee. Um, 
Alright, I got the loads again. I um, keep forgetting. Mm-hmm. See so, yeah. here. Lee having Fuse on Raw's next T is a big step up for being on a team in a little time this year. Okay. So, the WWE brought back lighting graphics for Chinese Star's entrance. It's great to see. It's one of the cool AR graphics that company used. So, yeah. Mm, yeah. So, we got Jai Gargano versus Ludwig Kaiser. Kaiser looks to prove that he didn't need to advance his health to defeat Jai Gargano with a two match for a man match this week. But Champa was a ring stand backup for Johnny Rust just in case. Gargano and Kaiser, two guys who have been in the ring with each other a dozen times over the years, but they already developed great chemistry and highlight highlighted each other's strengths. Kaiser did a great job setting up opponents' fast paced offense, while Gargano did the same for Pyramid Remember whenever he overpowered him. Both men are good at what they do. People were shocked they produced anything except a fun match the amount of time they're given. Vince came out to help watch Gargano score the win, yet Talon even seemed to have a bit of smile on his face. So Gargano defeated Kaiser. So, so basically, the pronunciation of Kaiser's name is actually soothing. And, you know, like, like Gargano and Chop have matching gear. It goes a long way making their team feel more long term. And then it was NXT. We got Kaiser's Red Rich Slam kind of look cool. We go to the women's tag team number of contenders, Fatal Four Way. It's weird. After being set up in a back segment, we got a fair four following four women's tag teams by new contenders for the titles. Taya, you can now get a chance to order. Ian Hartwell, Cash Relate, Neil Nile, and Dupree made up the quartet. And you mentioned competitors could be difficult to manage. Ian Harder is winning four teams and it being four four setup. The match has some set, fun setups, bills, and much to it. It was nice to see many women in the ring on Monday, but the weakest match got from the ring perspective. However, it may have been most entertaining against the title holders, Chelsea Green, Piper Niven, and being hilarious on commentary edition the most two women's spots. Knox ended up getting a win for her team over Ernie Natasha. They get not time to beat the other teams or a win. Tag title shot. So, yeah. Uh, it's good. So, yeah. It's good something. Mm. We got Chad Gable versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Gun- Mike Miz and Gunther had an in-ring segment. Talk a little track. Build up their kind of title feud. They talked for a long time before the things ended with Lester hit a low blow and a finish from the champ. Next, we got a Nakamura versus Gabriel. Recent weeks, the artists have been dismembering members of the Academy, so the leader of the group felt it was a duty to put him in his place. Gable uses an amateur wrestling skill to take Nakamura down a few times in the beginning of the match. They try to control back and forth a couple of times, but the pace during the first half was controlled by the Lippian. Nagar got more offensive during the second half, but Gable's on the one scene that most of the control of the time. The artist got the win. It wasn't the Kachash, and it was he had to use a penny combination to beat Gable, so maybe one more encounter in the future. This was a fun bout. The best of series between Nakamura and Gable looked good against other opponents. No surprise, but he started winning some bigger matches. Nakamura defeated Chad Gable. But how I will get a quick promo on video package that challenge must read to the match next week. Okay. Gable's counter to a good variation look great. Variation. And the full nest and super from game was crisp. McIntyre versus Uso. Jay So the main event show turn which men team would advantage heading to work against week, but McIntyre was also looking to take out Summer's frustration on Jay Uso in the process. They came face to face. Jay Uso took the first shot to Shade of hands, Sizely J Uso brought by her upper hand after exchanging Greeks. But Scott scored the first near fall of the big back elbow. They tried to control several times throughout the match to keep us guessing. And come but it even seem like a foregoing conclusion by hand. It was entertainment. Like a film main event for some reason. It would have been main of the show, but it would have probably been on the card. It would have fit better on the show. So yeah, the Scottish were kept talking about how you want to take out Luke for good, but he wrestled the match while he utters a feel of animosity. Hard as should have. So yeah, uh, my son got this one in clean win with future shot DT stuff as usual. Claymore kick. The show ended with two war game matches fighting around the ring. Cody Rhodes revealed a member of the group with Randy Orton with some obvious clue context clues. Drew McIntyre defeated Jey Uso. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the so yeah. The rules for war games are pretty are pretty un, easy to understand, but how somehow WWE made it somewhat complicated. So honestly, McIntyre is great at trash talking the ring because you can hear more of a crowd noise. 
Here's my thoughts. This week's Raw managed to deliver some drama at Ring Action. So I'm going to go home and into Survivor Series this week. A Saturday, 27 women were featured on Monday's episode across various matches, videos, segments, video packages. Instead of recording on Royal Rumble show, every match, Jungle level but performance was both to Kaiser, Razor Lynch, and Lee being close second. All right, Warren Gaines, only fun stipulation with the return of Orton set for review. Fans are cognizant for a great time. As a whole, it feels like WWE's program has hit its stride recently. It's not perfect, but it shows it's been constantly enjoyable from start to finish. Okay, all right, let's go. All right, let's go review Dynamite now. All right, here's my Dynamite, like AEW Dynamite review. All right, let's get to Dynamite now. Let's get to it. Uh, let's start with this week's Dynamite. All right, the, the Continental Classic kicked off this week with best wrestlers from the world, right, rallying for the right to become the first ever AEW Continental Champion. Where Eddie Kicks is never overweight, ring up our world titles at stake. The Thanksgiving broadcast how the first section in turn as well as the championship acceptance speech from Thomas Tony Storm, latest from Christian Cage. When, what went down? Who won their first victories in the first ever tournament? And what does it mean for our elite wrestling? And the build to the world's end on December 30th. The final on this recap of this Wednesday show. Uh, okay, final classic rules lineup. We got the blue group. Andrade El Ido, the American Dread, Brian Danson, Brody King, Cardo Casanoli, Danny Garcia, Real Bar World Champion, Ron Chan, Open Ray Chan, and Kingston. The Gold Group, Lito, Jay Lito, Jay White, Ron Moxley, Brian, Mark Briscoe, Roosh, Swiss Strickland. Now we already know the rules, so let's go to the match cards. The, for the Casanova Classic Goal, the main event was John Moxley versus Mike Briscoe, Casanova Classic Goal League, Swerve Strickland versus Jay Lito. Continental Classic Goalie versus Jay Rush versus Jay White. Orange Cassidy, Hook, Cassidy Shabbat versus Matt Monard, Shadow Parker and Jake Hager, Ruby Soul versus Sky Blue versus Anna J. Tiny's Tony Star Championship Spe- Acceptance Speech, and Christian Cage re Christians Nick Wayne and Luchasaurus. Let's, let's start with some Continental Classic Goalie with Swerve versus Jay Lethal. On the heels of sadistic Texas death match, full gear we saw him defeat him in Bank Page. Swerve directly become the first competitor to win points in the Middle Classic, defeating Jay Lethal in the op- round roll open, open, open tournament opener Wednesday night. It should be no ch- surprise to anyone that Strickland and Lethal had a great contest. You know, the competitor, each competitor spoiled each other's injuries, and it went Strickland double stomp for the pinfall. Kicking a diamond most buzz perfect star from the latest pay per view call. Struggle did not disappoint the fans of Chicago behind green like a Norris pot, making the opener feel like a you know, bigger deal. Great start to the show. Rickley defeat. <laughs> my thought, my thought for this match that pop of Strickland was enormous. And second thing, Strickland and Lethal form framework a match by targeting each other's injuries. Strickland's right shoulder, Lethal's neck and knee. Swerve is about the most organic baby face in this show. We go to NJF Clown Cole promo. The better for you, better than you, baby. And pie their way, limp their way to the ring. Does dance at the NJ, NJF hip is injured hip. A successful AW World Championship defense against Jay White, which tag team partner and Cole interfere as some banter. NJF made reference to the devil and interrupted by the mysterious masked devil who simply laughed at his assertion that he wanted nothing to do with the people's scumbag. This brought out Samoa Joe. MJ tried to screw out the world title shot before Cole talked to him about being a man of his word. Eventually, a match for the world's end. Agree, dude. But before Joe Rounds destroyed MJ in his hometown, take the gold. The biggest question of why Cole would be instant at MJF honoring his agreement with Samoa Joe for a world title match it is a convenient that when MJF grew close to that claim that he asked, tapped by the devil's minions, let's leave the champ and no choice but to turn to Joe. We could be getting closer to find out who's behind the mask. We're surprised if some medical plan kind of connected by that management of Cole. Or maybe just Jack Perry was unexpected possible outcome. This is much more multi layer segment that accomplished things, different things, and got in jail on the screen despite his injury. Good stuff in it. Man, Jeff Cole partnership appears to have Cole appeared two or three months ago. So, 
There's some parts of it. When I was born, the devil out of fear screamed. You know why? Because the guy didn't want any competition and just said for for being interrupted by AW's mass devil, who laughed. Then he talks about the Ring of Honor legend. I beat Chicago twice and just said reference to his two victories over CM Punk. Then adds that everywhere you go, I'll be food steps behind Joe and Joe Warren and Jeff Allen to have his back until the a world's end in Long Island for beating him and taking the AEW world title. Next, we got the trios match. AEW International Champ Costity falls victory over Moxley a full year by team with a AEW Champion Hook and Ray Shibata, Champion Shibata to defeat Daddy Match. Matt Manor, Cool Hand, and Jericho Park, and Jake Hager in trios match. The front bound, but that left former Jericho Pichy side members get a better shine. Bart Babyface exploded back into the ch- skirt. The wind might have changed the red drum sleeper from Hook and Sabata. That's not for any ongoing stories or make anyone look better or worse than either prior match. It was a good fun. Beyond that, the feature will anticipate re- return of Don Hansen, who converted a- delivered a curse to Hager amid the big pop from the Chicago fans. Hook, Shibata, Cassidy defeated Hager, Manard, and Parker. Cassidy paid a mention surprise at backstage Benjamin when Don Hansen made his return. Three weeks too late, but the return nonetheless. The career may have been weak. The Halloween ill inspired presentation was great. Don Hansen broke out Hager's favorite purple hat, and when he confronted the curse, the former world champion. We go to Christian Cage, Corey Christian, and Nick Wayne, which is a neuter story. On the heels of a full year loss to Adam Copeland, staying during out that he and his hand, Jack Cage led Nick Wayne, which is always in the ring, when attacking re-christening them. Oh, yeah. He did so, rebranding the source as Kill Switch and Wayne as the prodigy, but not before humiliating the former in a way that would likely continue to draw attention within the group. Shana Wayne, Nick's mom, interrupted the proceeds, but ended up catching a rate blow from Kill Switch for Katie's concerto. Anna Copeland made to save, delivered two spears, a concerto of his own. Stood tall as confident team came to cover up for the R Rage. Radar started realizing the competitor from his own mother. This is an interesting segment. Cage is a great heel. The delusions are really to be branded as something more and more generic. What's the point of calling Wayne something Ray had been referred to? So how did Copeland not realize Shane was a writer? Ring and attack her son when he slid right past her to wipe him out with the first spear. It's keeping the feud away so in a rat, chunky fashion, clunky fashion. Open leads to Copeland versus Cage at World's End. Mm. That's where, this is a quote. I can tell you, honestly, it's secure that I did not lose that match. Cage said, I have the build up points of admitting when, when losses. Nick Wynn did not lose that match. Luchasaurus lost that match. Cage or Luchasaurus with a knee, proceeding rename and quill switch. In order Wayne to defeat the label of the prodigy, one was fine. The other was a letdown because the commentary team has repeatedly labeled him the prodigy. Cage told Shane that her late husband buddy would have been disowned by his son. Go punch your car because your ship out to be getting Denny's, he told her. The bump by Shane into the ropes was nasty. We go to another Continental Classic, Roosh vs. Switchblade Jay White. The Switchblade earned three points to Continental Classic by pinfall victory with Roosh, defeating El Toro Blanco with a Blade Runner following well time detected low blow. This was a competitive match between two men just a solid job putting over physical exhaustion experience at disappointing nights at full gear. A post on Jay White as a resource for a heel who will find a way to cheat and win. Amy cannot rely on side interference. Bullet Club, Gold Cronies. It was a big bounce back to victory for one of the Tagas company after losing to NGF in full gear. For Rouge, it was another disappointing loss despite her performance solidifying as a premier wrestler in AEW. White Push, Ru- Pin Rouge. And we go to backstage. Paquette caught up with Hager, met her Parker, and her Jade. The later asked Parker, really, in her corner, Knight's three way wins match. She said she would be deceived by receiving a phone call at the same time for Ruby Soho. It took long for the commentary to remember that Bush fought a ladder match in full gear, just as worn down the way to a guy with one leg and a dislocated hip. Sky Blue versus Ruby Soul versus Anna J. The match was never good as it may have been, thanks to all the fun's attention to going solo, Soho, Angelo, Parker, Romance storyline. So much focus on that story and the interaction between two of So, Rhea, Matt, Mono, Ringside actually be, about became secondary. Blue win was important, sending things are heading direction of a challenging start for the AEW Women's World Championship. But how so she is being taken when her latest channel of stories of seeds are continue to rise. Blue defeated Jay Soho. 
prior to the match, Toysa made her chance to send speech for an exit was cut off by arrival of Blue in the direction at T. Chicago Native as an ex-contender to the title. Blues could be developed a real good worker. She was she not companion since when she was a year ago, day and night. She's gonna be a world champion sooner than Rad Layer. Matter Rad saw her leg and night argument between himself and Saraya Ring saw her side of the ring. Blues kicked slow in the arms of Parker would make matter make the matters worse. We go to the main event. Jay Briscoe versus John Mosley. A long running show happened in the main event this week's broadcast while John Mosley defeated Mark Briscoe. There are three points in the Connell Classic. More Rush and Rosman saw a growing battle between four world champions and one of the most respected influential wrestlers of the last two decades. Briscoe showed great toughness while absorbing everything. We had him was to come to Masa to stomp in the second Death Rider match. Mostly when he, felt, when he felt like a Oracle conclusion to something that was so surprising, it was time to start doing something mean, meaning with the Briscoe because some high profile losses do add up. Mark Moxley defeated Briscoe. So, uh, and this one started really in the show as a card that he promised. The show would go on until there's a winner. Uh, look, Moxley match with Blue. Even the Briscoe time and beyond necessary point only suggested two guys fighting cannot draw about drama on their own. Ridiculous consider who they are, how long they've been doing this. The crowd came alive in your fault, which Briscoe came out as Death Rider. Moxley delivered a stomp and test spawn with. Hey, look at that. It was a certain moment. My thought for this week is that the biggest show on Wednesday broadcast was a kind of classic. But it felt like it was a match that was shorter in time, especially the two that came out the opening due to the need to go long with a promo segment of the show. The show was driven up the heavier angle, heavy segments that kind of take up a lot less time. When we went down to the road, very good. It could have been more had AEW had not taken make time for either segment elsewhere. The show gets above average score because of in-ring quality. So, yeah. This is my thoughts on this week's Dynamite. Now we go straight to Ring of Honor. Now we go straight to Ring of Honor. Now all right, we're at Ring of Honor. Let's go to Ring of Honor this week's. This week's Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. Rousey teams and Maria Shepherd is Athena and Bay Starks. So Rosie Rousey makes her AR ROH debut on Honor Club this week. Rousey teamed with Shepard, Russell, Athena, Blue Starks, when AJ ran a show for Kia Form on November 17 from last week. So let's go to it. So, also on tonight's show, the ROA Pure Chant Shibata defends his title against Beretta. Shibata seeks his seventh title defense with winning the belt at Supercard Order in March. The wrestler he beat for the title will Yuta will be also be action in Pure Rules match. He faced Lee Moriarty in a match that was picked last night with Dynamite in Chicago. So, mm-hmm. okay. He can pay just another shot at the Tony Nese tonight. Nice to be a pain. So, yeah, last time he used to defeat a page on episode of air, so many teams. So, other than Yuta vs. Mariah, you know, Asher. So, let's go to it. So, this week, Arch begins with Arch win champion Athena playing Stark, ensuring Open Challenge 82 women to face them tonight. Shiv entered the frame once they left and made a phone call when she called. So, yeah, the, the Arch Pure Challenge title match Shibata defeated versus Beta for Beta. Beretta to it. Like, I mean, Shabbat defeated Trent Beretta to attain. The judges were Jerry Lynn, Max Romain, Jane Jacobs. Two men scramble to a stalemate and start with each man waiting to his finishing maneuvers. Beretta uses his first rope break, escape a short arm scissor attempt. Shabbat went for Beretta's arm, Beretta's arm, dropping knee on him, and kicking Beretta in the back. Shabbat landed two hard kicks and set Beretta to eight before running to Alpha Spear for Beretta. Beretta hit a 20 0 DET for falling with a running knee near, near fall. Beretta hit a lay in the chop to no avail. Shibata sh- stood up to no man in a form that sent Beretta to the corner. Beretta cut off his hesitation drop case, sending Beretta Shibata to the floor by hitting a ponche to the outside. Beretta hit a little drop kick, but Shibata rolled through hit a boot and bent both men down. <laughs> Shibata pushed Beretta in the corners by hitting a hit drop kick. Shibata hit a half hack suplex for a near fall. Shibata locked on the ankle lock, forced Beretta to use a second rope break at 7.30. Beretta rolled through a bone arrow lock, 
Quick strikes and little facts about Harris Yo for a near fall, then hit a Rick Clark slap in the face. Shabbat hit Pound and kicked the win and retained the title. So, yeah, mm hmm. This was a good match. When Nigel defeated Hero Hogan, Trisha Dora, Diamond. Diamond Diamond Hogan fought on the floor as Nigel fought the door with shoulder block. Diamond Corbin on Nigel corner for Hogan hit dive to Dora and Nigel on the floor. All four women ended up in the ring with Diamond or Dora powerbomb and Nigel on the ring. Hogan took these two down to cry cross by everyone laying chops to each other before the match broke down to six. Pierce six brawl ended with Hogan's super kick on Nine Gale for near ball. Eventually Nine Gale ended up alone in the ring with Dora, hitting the bay with a power bomb from the win. So we got Ethan Page versus Tori Nice. This was a very good televised feud. Ethan Page continued to get in the crowds in this match. Starting announced this week's group chanting with cancel order for Nice to focus on putting Page behind them. Nice caught Page with a boot for clever in the corner. Page slowed out of the corner shoulder block for Lane. Shoes and round shot for the note. Nice in the corner for Chad Page in the neck. Dropping Page over Rose on the neck. Nice threw Page into the stairs and he on the floor. Back in the ring. Page brought back and Nice avoided the step shot. With the spinning hill kick with their fall. Page fired up in the head shot near fall. Sterling had an interfere with ref call and they put him out. Nice complained to her leaning to Page and a running big boot for the win. Nice jumped Page at the belt leaning to a fight. So. That security had to break up. So yeah. So there we go. Now we go straight to okay, we got a recap of the ROH World Champ Eddie King to retain over, over the title with Jay Lethal. ROH World Tag Team Champion and the other team was the Bojo to beat the Guns to retain the tag titles. The Workhorse Men with three of the Irish Savages, the, the West Coast Cracker Crew, and the Infantry in a tag match. So yeah. Mm hmm. So it's good to see the workhorse get a win. It's been highly on RH TV. The actor is fast furious to start with infantry with control to start Bronson and be with a flash time for sending him to uphold his chest. Zags, Isaacs, Chuck tagged in for four arms for an enemy head kick. Team crew team to take down the Bronson and Bravo and workhorse. Pull the chest down the bro for the rest of the crew for Eric Kido out there on the floor. Bronson hit the dive the floor, but Boulder hit a sidewalk. Nelson, the salvage went for a transform splash. Bro, bro, match broke down flurry. The workhorse man eventually isolated Nelson to end the day so the kick assisted for the win. Then we go to Tony Nisa and Mike Sterling, we're backstage and left in there. The play by Nisa was off to Ethan Page. So yeah, mm hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. we go to Pure Rules match. Rita defeating Lee Mariah. Judges were Jimmy Jacobs. Master main Pat Buck, Mariah caught Yoda by this, but translated to a double wrist lock. Yoda fought out for Maria caught Yoda with a quick kick to the arm. Mariah grounded Yoda for locking the hammerlock blow and out of submission, transitioned to a pinfall for a near fall. Yoda transitioned to octopus strike for him to right angle slam for the near fall. Yoda hit a bias slam for playing a net top goal splash for near fall. Yoda went for the hammer and the elbow, and the elbow so he turned into a border switch dirty stretch. Yuta escaped. Mariah snapped Yuta's fingers, booted him into the corner. Both men fought on the top row for Mariah landed a single plus. The two men trade punches. The fool was caused by warning for getting the form of strength. They traded their two plus with Mariah Sika. Yuta's arm turned the bonus same stretch. Yuta made his way free outside the referee's sight for getting a seatbelt pin in the corner to score the win. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lee Johnson defeated Roz, uh, Roz, Lily Mack, and, and Jack Hartwell. Jack Hartwell made the press in here as he looks like someone going from both to the Ring of Honor more appearances. No came quick to hear from that quick away. Jack Hartwell took the match with Hartwell had a picture. Big Dusty Express was going to go for Ring of Honor. To the back, we were caught in the zone of the back. Big Dusty Express was going to go for Ring of Honor. Big Dusty Express was going to go for Ring of Honor. Big Dusty Express was going to go for Ring of Honor. The match become a flurry ending with Hunter. Here for Alan Johnson, for Cartwheel has fall to the Hunter for and of course for the ring. Lazar had maxed the four, but Josh Carter was six and split for the five spring in the win. So we got it's a page with backstage with Samir. Page is furious that Tony Smart Spear was trying to call the shots on his career. Nice with my man out, shake his hand, Page knew the issues were done. 
until Mitch Jack is in. So Maria Schaeffer now the main event. Schaeffer and Ronda Rousey versus Athena Bursa. This was a fun match as the crowd and her form was red hot from the jump. Rousey was better than the she did in the majority of her second run in WWE. There was a real buzz in the match when they made Ronda looked like a bigger star. She was a prod and the finish was creative. Athena had her Rousey did to rise for a crucial error where there's a one of her expertise for final battle. This was a great main event for either way. So, the Dia threw Starks to the ring, start with Rosa taking her down to drill throws. Shepard tagging Lady takes the Starks. Starks tagging out to Adina, but after Rosa tagging in, Nina tagging right out to Starks. Rosa threw Starks into a corner for locking in the armbar on the ropes. Starks sent Shepard to the ropes, and Athena can eat in the back. Shepard booted and put Athena down, but Starks and Athena double team to Shepard to control. You know, so Shepard was knocking Rosa, and then Shepard eventually fought off Starks, made her tag to Rousey. Dia to attack out the stars again. Rousey and Rousey go wild on her. But Dia got attacked the stars. Rousey and Dina send Rousey to full Valeria. Dina drops for both Shuffle and Rousey with the time on drop on one side, time on the floor. Dina went to the top right for the old face on Rousey, but Rousey turned into our bar. Dina powered Rousey up, dropped her in the power bomb, but Rousey held on. Stars broke it up with a swan time bomb with Shepard dropped through the backdrop. The batch broke down the piercing brawl. Rousey catching Athena step up on her arm bar. Dina better away free for hitting a pop up German super from their fall. With some starts. Um, Shepard tagging in, Shepard not starts to throw. Dina started to catch against Shepard. Pop up position. Rousey. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I mean, leading to Shepard. So, Dina to throw that on their fall. So, I should probably do that. So, Rousey. Okay, so after the match, Dina went to jump. Shuffle, shuffle, come with a bed kick. Left the top. At the end, the power bell points the dog stays at Dina. Rousey and Shuffle so tall, the show went off the air. So, that was Ring of Honor. So, let's get to the wrestling news. Wrestling news. It'll take long. Alright, WWE not in 9000 yet. And Kevin will believe he's re signed by AEW this past weekend. Big Brady and World Champ next to Jacob Freeman and the in full gear. The women's wrestling pro wrestling party is successful to retain tag team champ alongside partners. The injury cold following the match. The injury was attacked. The sign on the arena screen for Hanford. The main event was changed to the cold to not compete. Finally, the time that Freeman and Tim Aquas can't bring it up for a match pending the sign of Jay White. Winford is Pond Sanders. Trust me. It's weak. Brian again can't be in and the contract is here to keep it. Nervy Mexican. Things like that. They like me. I know where Ross and the most money. Of course, throughout the year, Brian might occasionally get to play a bidding war between the people where the hype is on the company's free agency. So, yeah. Mm hmm. So, Hassan Rattles and Hannah Priscilla got an associate of the league, Freeman, finally the sign of AEW. One of the associates is that he had a zero talk between the sides. He was pushing for the idea for Freeman's second in the free agency meeting with the following narrative. They believe he has a sign for 2027. This is a clean Jets head storyline from the resource. I'm telling you, another WWE story that was told was about one of the unannual long term deal, which is why they stopped pushing the 2024 stuff. Update. Now, yeah, that's true. NJF is definitely signed to a 2027 deal. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. So, yeah, it's what it is. And that's what it is. So, yeah, NJF is exposed. He is signed to 2027. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Now we go to. The updates on Scavaro is back to back on AEW TV. AEW star Scavaro is now two years away. And then he was suffering in the wrestling ring. His mom called his friend. But Gerald does tell Scavaro that he has the strongest speed to muscle in the mouth. Sure, it's 
somebody else to understand back in action. Delso, Delso said he's feeling a lot better. The turn ended. I definitely thought he'll be in the time every single man. Free fight. Get it back yet. I know he won. Come back in the major way to see where time he takes them. So, when Levar returns, it's not able to go back on special business. It must resolve to matter. Back up. So, Eric Bishop weighs on Will Ospreay signing with AEW. I don't know what he is. I'm going to wait until episode 83 weeks. Bishop on the ball. Signing Ospreay to fight in your parts. The pain started in the WWE. I'm sorry, sorry, I don't know what Ospreay has a lot to do with his personal goals were. There was a lot of money on the table both companies. So, he has two companies that were with both of them offering you a substantial amount of money. Personal choice. Do your career. I'm not there. I since they have certain things and pressure. Many people that some that stay in touch with, there's a lot of freedom there. There's a lot of frustration that they uh, are about. I think if a guy like Will Spray don't come in, I don't want to say that's in the future, probably a lot of influence has WWE. You know, this one from Bischoff and Jeff Silva, the producer here, talk about about your personal freedom. People doing the things you want to do with people, I'm doing them. And and then it's hard to put a price tag on it, you know. Like he said, here's $1 million a year. Work office in New York City, fighter. He talks about that most about corporate structure and WWE. I'm going to say that. And it's also where Osprey signed with AW because they promised something like Tosha and some tax. He said, he said no. It's no, unlikely. It's not going to happen. And, like, like, this one says this. Like, people can change. Osprey made a change. Like, Basically, you peak, but you're young, so you have opportunity. Changes are changed, so that's what Big Shot Shot's pretty much said. So, yeah, that was wrestling news. We got all the way. Let's go straight to SmackDown review. Let's roll into SmackDown. Okay, SmackDown this week. I mean, from 24 hours for Super Series live event. The AFSS One Airways Friday night this week from Chicago's All Star Arena. We go home broadcast by headline by the Unspeed Tag Team Champions Balor and Priest, Judgment Day defending against Street Profits. With Ford and Dawkins able to pay out the success with the championship victory, or did Judgment Day build momentum and during War Games Survivor Series event? Find out about this week's recap of SmackDown. Mm hmm. Alright, he's announced in advance for Undisputed Tag Champs, Ballard Priest for Street Profits, The Grace of Walmart Fabric Cameroons. Let's go to the show. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go to the show. Um, let's go to the result. Uh, let's, let's keep going. Okay. Sorry, I just look at my notes. So. Alright, Becky Lynch, her team kicked off SmackDown. Belair, Bel- Shotzi, Flair, Becky made their way to the ring, kick off smack, despite tension. Teens, teen two later, same page. Bailey, master manipulator, quietly villain, arrived on scene trying to poke and prod a delicate partnership. Leads to the making of a main event later when Snow, Show, Pine, pitting the queen, the man, to the damage control war games team. This is essentially any ever show opening segment, starting to have a nice main event. This one had a little bit of a substance. Tease the main teach and trenching between Flair and Lynch. The opposite, absent, Ayaskai, the Akota Kai, Asuka, saying backing out the role model, but still very uneventful in the ring promo start the show. Could have been far short of invention in. Chemistry between characters with shots and brittle energy and comprise are more reserved partners is fun. So, yeah. So Lynch refused to say Flair name while explaining the team's decision to team with the Bay Face team with Night Hunt Touch of Continui. While Shazi says the Queen said after rambling around to revenge on the ballsy badass, Bailey cursed into the ring alone, made her way to the ring, same way tired to stir things up between Lynch and Flair. Responded by asking Wilma what her teammates are continuing to start decision between Dan Control and Bailey and her partners. We go to the Undisputed Tag Team Championship match. Judgment Day versus Street Profits. Judgment Day secure momentum ahead of the Saturday War Games main event. As Ben Ballard and Police defeated the Monsist by the Women's World Champ Rip Ripley to defeat the Street Profits. Retain the tag belts. The, the match had a quicker pace than most, and the crowd ate it up. Ford and Dawkins were de facto bay faces, better for worse. The Chaco Chapter of WWE University team regained titles. Warren previously instead, Brain Brent Ballard and Priest overcame the challenge, sent a message to Cody Rhodes. 
Jay Uso and Sami Zayn, World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins, and a returning Randy Orton won a quality victory. We saw some of the comments would tend to be short, short term, but she creates questions on Street Pods where the WWE is on BM heels. Judgment Day defeated the Street Pods to retain. This was an interesting match. Both tender his heels. Ford ended up fired up the crowd by Bayface. One team is not going to cheer it over on year one, but anyway. So we saw a priest body Ford. Now, prior to the break, pending the challenges and defense enter a commercial. We got Ripley interfering to get praised and battle to win. By the last of I watched backstage in a feud and fury about the outcome. We got the Waste of Waller with Kevin Owens. That got involved to a tag team action. Hijinks on Grayson Waller. Fact gave away to tag team match. Egotistical. They also had Grayla. See Gray Waller. And his unsponsorable bestie Austin Neer against Owens and Lant Knight. The two got the best in the recent weeks. The match was showcased the poor guys. And so the fast and poor case. Serious got carried. The show was red hot. For me faces at night. Let's see. Huh? He face on that. But heels on the ring when near right over the right over team. Second segment, permanent segment, PC most unnecessary. Always oh, night nice to feel the area Waller. We got a nice video pack on Dragon Lee. Clearly, Santa not explain his background, given an opportunity to build a connection to WWE Universe. Make funny jokes on your butt and it'll look better. Owen said, pointing at Deary Justin and him. Uh, you know what happened when I said something? Owen said, for a shot of rival, Illinois, you can see a deafening pop. We go to Santa Escobar attacking Carlito. Skip. Until Escobar erupted Carlos Carlito's promo Friday night, I in the segment we add into the insult. Shade the insult to Spanish and the instance by Scar by the Ramus. There is gone forever. Let your raw sneak attack by the heel of Carlito clutching his arm, teasing he won't be able to compete inside his schedule match with a former LLW teammate. Backstage while commercial break, a spoiler the fur injured Carlito until Dragon Lee made the save, but need to heal off. Team had potential change in Scar's lineup. This test was great. So was already one of his hated guys in the company. That Lee stepped up to defend the LWO about being the official never the match at this point is a great way to build his presence on the show. As far as Scarlett where his LWO tattoo was criticized him not representing the LWO. He little rave so much you're gonna be in a hospital. Scar over here and saying the show heads a break. Carly crushed his shoulder for the sneak sneak knee sneak knee strike. We go to Brawling Brutes versus Pretty Deadly. Might the Brutes, Brawling Brutes, be no more after last week's loss? With Butch and Rayleigh kicked past at Rich Holland with a bro kick. The prowess of the team walked down, partly even defend themselves against Pretty Deadly and Prince and Prince and Kit Wilson. Butch turned to a mean spirit of front, fighting the posh pretty off the blind tag, rolled up speed, and the Brew Wade's inspiring showing. This was seen as just one of the two things. Butch and Holland were poised to go separate ways as James is kind of trying to go on a return and bring them back together. A split brings up one cluster to re Christianize Butch and Butch and Pete Dunn, so be it. Pretty Daddy defeated Burling Brutes. Holland entered the ring and Butch, so he connected with the teammates. At the Holland, what? But Butch, the Brown Bruce with Fall's opponents so retains their real zones was coming to the numbers disadvantage. Though backstage, Nick Dalton officially announced the match between Khalil and Scorpio postponed to Lee interrupt and pulled him to add to the match instead. All this obliged and Lee vs. Scott Baller was announced announced moments later. Now we go to Becky Lynch and Flair vs. Bailey and Asuka. For the majority of the main event of Friday night, Becky Lynch Flair was on the same page they battled. They asked to control Oscar and Bailey. At one point, like the man would pick up a win for a team, deliver the man house sound, put Bailey away, then fly a really spared Oscar into her attention to fight a relationship prior to momentary. Make up once again and rear itself. The heels took advantage, scored the one, the all come for his entry. Cliffhanger that begs the question of the Bay fans doing the fail at War Games. Poor can I get along? Gets the match done to the fans, seek it deep beyond War Games gimmick, something that can only serve hands the battle saw you're going bloodline. So Bailey Hot and Asuka defeated Bear Fair Lynch. The tension is come to the plant to see the tension as Flair Lynch failed to enter the ring with the rest of the team. And we got CM Punk chant, was pretty shot down. So other stuff, you know. 
overall, like, this episode of Samantha blew by a good sign for WWE as it, it puts the final touch on the built Survivor Series. The judgment looks strong. There continue to be essential potential paid to so the division storyline involving Becky Lynch, Charlie Flair, we got Hot Angle, Hot Carlito, and Carlito, I mean, and Santos Escobar. During the fun Owens and Knight versus Daria Waller match, and you have a show that was easy to watch and definitely drummed up interest for one of the biggest shows of the year. So, this was my thoughts on SmackDown. Let's go. Now we go straight to Rampage and Collision to end the broadcast, you know. Let's go to Rampage. All right, Rampage. All right, Rampage. Yeah, Rampage. All right. We're going to do a live coverage of Rampage. Okay. Recap this week. Collision of Rampage are collated. So, yeah. So, we have... Hey, this this week's show featured a ton of action, including a few matches, ongoing content of the tournament. Also saw Kabo Shabata defend the Orange Pure Champion against the former champion in own right, Will Utah. Let's look what went down this week on Saturday. Let's start with Hook versus Makamero. Rampage air for collision in early time. Usually, Hook came to kick off the show with a match against Romero. This was a great example of how AEW is skilled performance all levels. Hook is still getting a career off the ground. Romero's a journeyman who's won all the titles all over the world. Romero put the young in his place. Earlier, by counting his offense, using veteran experience, outsmarting, but Hook didn't let him have it all the offense. Even though it's clear that Romero has the upper hand for a time, Hook's more short of bursts of offense kept him in the fight. Every time he hit something, it, expl- it looked explosive. This combo was for choice, put in an open spot. Lot Romero, Hook put on a fun performance that gave more opportunity to sell for his opponent, even before I was like, Rocky's finisher. Hook choked the Mount Red Run for the win. So, yeah, okay. Rum, so the, the way that McGinnis managed to soul test, Company Hook at the same time, was pretty impressive play of British and soul comedy. Hook crushed Slip Suplex was great. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. It is a good thing they choked cut to commercial when he did a spot where Mara tried to run Hook to the ring. Didn't look so good. There we go next to Chris Chandler versus Diamet. After this TV is title full gear, Chris looking to get back to her winning ways at America Diamet. This is the first meeting of singles about, but Diamet doesn't get some hold a win over a standard tag match. They start with simple lockup, strange holds, question how they perform each move, but they were kept things respectful until Diamond decided to be the one to strike. Matias came out the punch. <laughs> Stage was an to strategy and then slowing that down. She had upper hand during the first half. Second half was much more competitive. There were a few moments of awkwardness. As a whole, there was sour all the audio and it gave Diamond more time to written than she had on AEW TV a long time. Sandler picked up the witness. This one went lying out to the match. When Martinez trying to attack, this was going to lead to a tag match. Sandler defeated Diamond. Stat looked more serious than usual. She looked angry, which is understandable on losing the title. The big player energy, energy drink ads are on the stage attracting. Stella really good at acting with just her first expressions. You can tell how she her character feels. The Kingdom vs. Local Talents. Kabosh Kasura Shabana vs. Utah. The Pure Championship. Natavian. And Mike Bennett gave a promo about Adam Cole and Jet Martin on local talents, a quick match. Kingdom won what appeared to be a no snuff effort. The Kingdom defeated two jobbers. So, the main event on Rampage was. was uh, Ram Hour was a pre chance for rematch between Shibata Yuda, Lynn, Jacobs, Christopher Daniel said the judges on stage after the announcer right now the rules made his direction on judgments of the current former pure champions lock up. As expected, this more felt more personal than the previous encounter. You don't want to prove that he's learned enough eight months since they match it supercar to defeat the wrestler. You don't ever know winning to reclaim the pure championship. We had to resort to a little blow to do it. This cut this help kept Yuta looking like a heel potential shit about a lot of it. 
you offer you offer a little you can handshake for a second level of DET is a great way to end it. You that defeated Shibata to win the pure championship. We got a great video packet for Daniel Garcia for the for this match, honestly. There is something special about Shabbat's music, so different from most wrestling things. It's in part, since I'm a part of it, it fits his whole vibe. Let's talk about Yuta. The way Yuta carries himself is completely different from a year ago. He has a new swag, a lot more confidence. He is no longer just a good technician. He's an all-around performer now. That's good for Will Yuta. Now we got a game. Now we got a collision now. The, the, the collision part of the show now begins. It... Garcia versus Daniel Garcia versus Claudio Castanelli. It begins as Garcia Castanelli competing in a match in the blue bracket in the Continental Classic Tournament. For Garcia, this is more just winning some points. He was someone a lot of fans feel should have been in the BCC. Put in a GSS instead, became a sports entertainer instead. Now, Red Devil is improving more than just a funny dance. He wants to show everyone he's one of the best in the world. Like Casanova gave him the chance to do that. I expect there was a fantastic display of technical ability for both men. Was was that they were telling someone to Garcia versus Shabata. They were the veteran versus young talent. But they were told stories different way. Yuta wasn't the underdog, but Garcia was. Garcia survived a lot, but he was only able to kick out of their power bomb from Swiss to powerhouse. Clay Casanova defeated Dan Garcia. Casanova's counter ability was great. Constantly swung Garcia the barricade looked nasty to me. Who's <laughs> versus the boys? House of Black versus the Commander and Gravity. Kill Swage took on the boys in a handicap match one sided. It was short. The mass man made quick work of the twins. Broke a chair when he chose one of the twins after the match with Adam Copeland riding to prevent from doing more damage. Copeland hit him with two country doors and a curb stop. The match was short into the post match attack, but it got Copeland to pop the crowd and served the purpose. Copeland gave up last day's promo after the break. Kill Switch defeated the boys. So the House of Black was an action. Buddy Matthews, Malachi Blood took on the team with great gravity. Commanded the high fives had a few opportunities to show up the skill. The most part, this was a dominant performance by House of Black. Both Black and Matthews became frustrated, losing at full gear, feel like they were extra extra vicious. Could easily won the match last time. This won't be remembered in a week, but they did a good job setting House of Black back on the right path. I don't know he lost by everyone, but Julie Hart. This bout lasts longer than it needed to be, but not in a bad way. <laughs> Black Murphy picked up a solid, unpredictable win. Give Holly more decisive. Win might make sense, but give the crowd a better match than they're going to get complained. House of Black defeated Commander of Gravity. Tristan kills for Tristan hit on hit on April was brutal. Casa probably could have caught him, but it was nowhere to be seen. Every member of the House of Black has a great entrance. The great visual presentation is the best of all AEW. Gravity cut in all these other entrepreneurs in AEW because see some character development. Being a high five person isn't a personality. Way Matthew sends Gravity to Black's knee. Did not go as planned. We got Julia Hart versus Lady Frost, TBS champion. Lady Frost got a big opportunity this week when she got a TS champion that was won by Julia Hart in full gear. I was overpowered at first, but she quickly showed far she was not to be overlooked. Both women got some stiff, shot, stiff shots on the arm, but, but, but Frost's gymnastics helped her steal the spotlight a bit. A couple of spots ended up looking sloppy due to lack of experience working together, but most of it really got to send. Hart won the retainer title. Julia Hart defeated Lady Frost. It's always nice to see Lady Frost on AEW TV. She's underrated talent. Hart continues to add things, little things that are interesting to make her feel different every couple of weeks. The House of Black Wolf for this match, there was no kind of so they fought outside the ring for a long time. We go to The Righteous versus FTR. Next time, we'll crash a little action against Vincent Dutch. Vincent Dutch, your girl was nowhere to be seen. This is an even 2 on 2 match. Dutch put him over a fight with Vincent, but before the break, this all about was about FTR. The Righteous began making a comeback during the picture of picture. After we had come back to the show, the majority of the show, we have come to the show, uh, FTA Downey, a single. Yeah, so I'm just, it's great to see the righteous game more time on TV. But AEW needs more consistent with them. Where's the grace and 
Where are Archer and Roberts? Does the writers even have an agenda right now? At the fun of a basic tag team contest, FTS scored a win with Shadow Sheen. Matthews that came through the crowd did not tag, they just talked to FTR. FTR defeated the Righteous. Yeah. So we got, we also got Dante Martin's promo, turn promo. It was messed up, but they had to do a show it again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Keith Lee was the lead, all right? This is Lee was Lee this week when Lee took on the in there for Moriari. Moriari being Shane Taylor's current associate. He and the this one had a built in feud. This is about two complete different styles. Moriari first speed strikes and submissions on Keith pa- Keith pa- The Pajos was capable of occasional feats of agility. I'm tired. Alright. I can't. I, ah, I, let's just get. They could have a fun clash. Um, man, to be the perspective. Uh, to go with some entertaining spots. More easy. A very favorite match from his hometown crown. It was nice to see, but did a good job. I made it clear he was. He was. He was. He was. He Keep him a slam, you slam to score the win by pinfall. But if you're a feud with Taylor, let's hope AW falls off the other soon. Keep Lee to feel Lee Moriarty. Keep Junk Kick look good. Keep powered up, overpowered him. It was a good moment. All right, the main event of the show saw Brody King taking like any kicks in our match and the ongoing Continental Classic. The House of Black. Right, picked up two wins in the show. The king looked to make a hat trick. The fight was to keep the tiles he earned, so we're earned to earn. The one of the matches to put a gift to Big E, said Big Me, Matt Swag was brutal, hard hitting, highly entertaining. Guys, I'm physical and good. If I each other's oil oh, good, it's going to be a treat. They filled 20 minutes of the show with a lot of action. And the crowd is here left and right. Put in charge of hell. At the putting in charge of hell, sorry, this is big about me. Hell is going on. I guess this is a couple of huge power from, from King. So, yeah, very King defeat Eddie Kingston. So, Kingston had a Roberto Clementon jersey. It's easy to figure out how big Kingston is on the team next to a beast like King. The contest of Trump is awesome. So, my thoughts, uh, uh, my thoughts, uh, this world, I'm going here, I'm going here, my, um, my, well, my thoughts on Rampage Collision this week, it's a, it's a bit of a in between her, it was okay, it was a good show, they put a great effort, so, yeah, Rampage Collision was good, so, so, yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, this is the Gustavo podcast. I'll see y'all next Sunday as usual. I'll see ya. Oh shit. Um. Uh. Probably the. Pro- I'll see ya probably the last Sunday because yeah. Uh. Probably the last Sunday because next Sunday will be the last Sunday. I mean because it's gonna be to my big break. I'll be probably back in January. So see y'all later.